Hello everyone and welcome to Talking the Talkies. My name is Peter Waters and in today's video I will be going over all of the winners of this year's Golden Globes Awards. Uh, so yeah, I already posted my reactions video to the nominations so now I'll react to the winners. Why not? And uh, so I Full disclosure, I have already looked at all the winners uh, before I made this video, so it's not really a reaction. It's more of a review of all of the winners of this year's Golden Globes and kind of how I think that might help uh, set it up for the Oscars. All right, so I have the Golden Globes website here. This is how they actually announced all the winners because there was no televised broadcast. They didn't even stream it. They just unceremoniously uh, announced the winners on their social media accounts. So it was the lamest Golden Globes of all time, uh, but it's still kind of an interesting uh, thing for movie fans to check out. So here we go. Here's Best Picture Drama. It went to Power of the Dog. Uh, it's a little bit surprising that it went to Power of the Dog. Um, so a lot of people were predicting Belfast uh, to win the award. That one's uh, about Kenneth Branagh's childhood growing up in a Ireland's Civil War, and um, that one did not win. Uh, it went to Power of the Dog, a very moody, strange Western movie uh, that goes to very dark places. So I do think that a win for this over Belfast for the Golden Globes definitely highly sets up the Power of the Dog for an Oscar win. I do think if I were to bet money at this exact moment in time that Power of the Dog is going to win the Oscar. Um, lately, the Oscars have been uh, awarding kind of oddball picks for Best Picture. If you think about it, Nomadland, Moonlight, uh, The Shape of Water, these are sort of strange, almost European uh, flavored uh, films. They're not sort of the all-American or uh, classical type structured movies, they since they've expanded their voting body uh, to include more international voters, um, they've gone for the more like art house snob appeal films, and I do think Power of the Dog has that over a movie like Belfast or Coda or King Richard, so I do think that um, Power of the Dog's chances at winning Best Picture are hugely increased by this win. All right, Best Picture Musical Comedy went to West Side Story. This is like the safe pick. It's sort of the opposite of uh, Power of the Dog. West Side Story is a remake of a classic musical, and so it just is like comfort food. And maybe that's what helped it win uh, musical or comedy because it is um, it's something that, you know, a lot of people really enjoyed. Uh, you know, it didn't have much of a competition. Maybe Tick, Tick, Boom, a very similar uh, musical type thing. Um, Cyrano, I have not seen, uh, so I'm, I can't comment on that too much. Don't Look Up is very divisive, and so is Licorice Pizza. So West Side Story, it's this grand, uh, old-school style musical that you don't see too much anymore. So uh, that one was unsurprising, although I think winning Best Musical or Comedy, I don't necessarily think it hugely or vastly increases its chances of winning Best Picture. Um, I think Power of the Dog and is the front runner by far. All right, Best Actress kind of surprisingly went to Nicole Kidman. This was a super stacked category this year. Um, a lot of people thought Kristen Stewart might win for Princess Diana. Uh, Olivia Colman has been sort of rising in the ranks lately for The Lost Daughter. And my personal favorite is Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. But um, it went to Nicole Kidman. And I think it's because she definitely um, took a huge risk with her uh, take on Lucille Ball. Uh, Nicole Kidman, not known for her comedies. Usually she plays women in complete distress in her films. And, uh, you know, when it was announced that she was going to play Lucille Ball, probably one of the most famous female comedians of all time, thanks to I Love Lucy, her sitcom, uh, even, I've raised my eyebrows at that casting choice, uh, but luckily the movie that she was in doesn't really necessarily focus on her comedy. It's more about the drama, backstage drama, um, so it's definitely more of an Aaron Sorkin movie than a comedy film. Uh, so she did a really good job with it, and she sort of transformed into the role, so I can see why she was awarded here. Although, um, unlike Power of the Dog, for some reason, I don't necessarily think that this means that she her Oscar chances are highly uh, inflated. I do think she still has competition from especially Chastain, Coleman, and Stewart. 
Uh, however, I am still predicting Nicole Kidman to win the Oscar. Um, so unless things change and, you know, sort of go with uh, um, how some of the uh, trends go here and there with different awards shows, I do think Nicole Kidman at this point has a good chance of winning um, at this point anyway. All right, best actor in a motion picture drama goes to Will Smith. Uh, so this is another one that's kind of predictable. Again, the Golden Globes love to award like very famous movie stars. And I think Will Smith is overdue for award season. Although, uh, sort of like Nicole Kidman, I think this might bump him up a little bit, but um, I do think it is between him and Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I can eliminate the other three. Denzel Washington will probably be nominated, but I do think it's between Will Smith and Power of the Dog. Um, and time will tell. I think uh, if King Richard gets any wins in any category, it will be for uh, Best Actor for Will Smith. And that's pretty much it. I mean, he's the King Richard of the title. So, um, But if they really like Power of the Dog, Benedict Cumberbatch is kind of the main star of that movie. So I can see maybe it going to him. All right, let's move on here. We have Best Actress in a Musical or Comedy, Rachel Zegler, her first ever movie role, acting for Steven Spielberg. Pretty incredible stuff that she is a uh, winner of a semi-prestigious award, albeit one that means nothing, but the Golden Globes have a name cachet to them, and she'll forever be Golden Globe uh, winner, Rachel Zegler. So, pretty incredible. Um, I don't think any of uh, the nominees had a chance here. Um, besides maybe Alana Heim uh, for Licorice Pizza, but I don't think she has as good a chance as uh, Rachel Zegler of being nominated uh, at the Oscars. So um, it will be a real tough chance for her to get nominated, but Rachel Zegler, um, I think, has a good chance of being nominated. All right, Best Actor in a Musical. We have Andrew Garfield. Um, I this one was another uh, non-shocker, Tick, Tick, Boom, uh, doing very well with the nominations. Um, I think you can write off these other two for the Oscars. I don't even know if Cooper Hoffman or Anthony Ramos will even be considered. Um, DiCaprio is right on the cusp, so I can see him not getting nominated. Uh, Peter Dinklage is maybe the only one uh, that could uh, threaten, um, you know, one of the nomination spots. Um, so Garfield... I think he's a lock for a nomination at this point, winning this award. Uh, I still think he will go to either Will Smith or Benedict Cumberbatch for Best Actor um, at the Oscars, but I think this him winning this award absolutely locks him in uh, for a nomination at the very least. All right, Best Supporting Actress, Ariana DeBose. I think this means she's going to sweep everywhere. Um, she won uh, for West Side Story, and I do think that... Uh, this is going to be one of those sweeps, just like Daniel Kaluuya. Once he started winning for Judas and the Black Messiah for the last last year's award season, it was just a sweep after that. I do think uh, we're going to see her sweep everywhere. Um, you know, Kirsten Dunst could go along for the ride for Power of the Dog, but um, I think there's just more momentum around Ariana DeBose at this point. All right, Best Supporting Actor. This is a very weird one. Uh... Until now, I didn't think Cody Smith McPhee had the greatest Oscar chances, but uh, seeing him win here, I don't know. I have to question everything. He has a very, very strange oddball performance in this movie. There's one hula hooping scene that is unlike any you will ever see. Uh, it is a very strange movie, um, and so I'm kind of surprised to see him winning a lot of these predictive awards, but uh, I do think that this makes him kind of the front runner for uh, the Oscar at this point. Um, if it were me, I would have gone with either Troy Kotzer or Kieran Hines. I thought that they maybe had a better chance and they had more um, lovable characters that you would expect to, to have awards. Cody Smith McPhee, it's a very subtle and it's a good performance, but he's very sort of cold and detached and sort of hard to read. And um, I don't know, he's not the sort of character that you would you know, warmly given award to, so I'm surprised to see that here. But uh, good for him. He seems like a young guy, you know, his career is ahead of him, and this uh, really strange uh, role in this great Western movie um, is getting him more noticed, so good for him. All right. Next, we have Best Director. This one was predictable. Jane Campion for Power of the Dog. 
Um, I don't know if she's ever won a lot of uh, Best Director awards, maybe for the piano back in the day, but definitely it feels like it's uh, her time to win. She's very well respected, been in the game a long time. Uh, very, uh, just a critical favorite director that, uh, you know, is having her time in the, in the sun, I guess. Um, Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, I, I thought maybe could have got in, gotten in there. Steven Spielberg, because they like West Side Story. Uh, and Denis Villeneuve, uh, because his Dune was so visual. Sometimes directors go along the ride with, like, um, you know, very visual movies. But Jane Campion, Power of the Dog, definitely um, seems to be a lock for the Oscar at this point. I would guarantee Jane Campion going to win the Oscar for Best Director. I'd be shocked if she didn't win that. All right, Best Screenplay. This one was kind of surprising, because you would think uh, Best Picture goes along with Best Screenplay, but uh, Power of the Dog lost here, and in fact, it was Belfast, so I think they're trying to spread the love here. So um, when they announced that uh, Kenneth Branagh won for Screenplay, I just assumed that uh, Belfast was going to win Best Drama, but uh, they kind of wanted to split it up. So I do think the three frontrunners for Oscar Best Picture are Belfast... Uh, Power of the Dog and West Side Story at this point. Um, so, yeah, those are the three, I would say. Um, so, but, I don't know, Jane Campion, I think uh, they might not award her twice, but they did award Bong Joon-ho twice for Parasite, so you can never really tell. All right, Best Picture Animated. I'm not going to talk about this too much. Everyone knew Encanto was going to win. It's also nominated in Best Score, so clearly they loved the movie, so... That one was pretty obvious, and it's a great movie, so it's well-deserving. In fact, um, although I haven't seen uh, Flea or My Sunny Mod, I don't think you could have gone wrong with any of the um, animated features this year. Very strong category. Uh, Best Picture, uh, Foreign Language Film. Uh, this is a movie, if you remember back to my last video that I made, uh, reacting to the nominations, I had never heard of Drive My Car. And at this point, it seems like Drive My Car went from, I had never heard of it before, to all of a sudden, it's going to win everything. Uh, so I do think, uh, you know, people are talking about it maybe winning or getting a nomination for picture, nomination for director. And uh, yeah, apparently it's like this three hour long movie. I don't know much about it. It has apparently some sort of a jazzy soundtrack or something like that. I still don't know what it's about. But this movie from Japan seems like it's going to drive right into the Oscars. It seems to be winning everything. And it's like all of a sudden, magically, it has been chosen. And it's going to sweep everything for some reason. Uh, so I'm excited to check it out. I still haven't seen any of the nominees yet. Um, I can't wait to see especially A Hero, which comes out on Amazon uh, Prime soon. So I'll check that one out uh, sometime this month. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Drive my car. Apparently uh, getting a lot of buzz. All right, just a couple more categories here. We have Best Score in Motion Picture goes to Hans Zimmer. This is another one I predicted. Hans Zimmer, uh, his score for Dune is like epic in scale, and it's just a very impressive work. Um, I think his biggest threat was Johnny Greenwood for Power of the Dog. But um, yeah, I expect Hans Zimmer to get the Oscar. I think it's going to just be one of those sweeps. He's going to get everything. All right, best song in a motion picture. I think this is the last category. Yes, it is. Uh, so this one goes to No Time to Die. Just like I predicted in the other video, I think this song's going to sweep everything. It's honestly one of the best Bond songs ever. And if you think about it, the last three Bond songs have won the Oscar. So uh, I, well, if this one wins, that is. Uh, so if No Time to Die wins, it will be the third one in a row, uh, following uh, Sam Smith uh, for Spectre's soundtrack and um, Adele for uh, Skyfall. So uh, I think No Time to Die is an amazing song, so I'm happy to see it win. Uh, its only close threat, I would say, is Beyonce for King Richard, but No Time to Die, it's like, it's going to win. It's an epic song. So that is it. Those are my sort of reactions to all the winners and maybe what it means for the Oscars. But because these things are so unpredictable, I could be totally wrong on all of them, and we'll only see when it's time for the Oscars this year. So, uh, as we can see, uh, we don't even know, uh, you know, who's going to host it, what it's going to be. Is it going to be virtual, in person? Last year, the Oscars were in the middle of a train station, directed by Steven Soderbergh for some reason. Uh, these awards shows, in the middle of Omicron, it's 
we have no idea what's going to happen. And that's kind of what makes it exciting um, and also kind of depressing at the same time. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, definitely uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, I look forward to seeing where this award season goes. Uh, so until next time, I'll see you guys later.